Welcome to my review of Super Intelligence, now streaming on HBO Max, the latest film directed by Ben Falcone and starring his wife, Melissa McCarthy. For some reason, this film was meant to be in theaters, but it found its way to its rightful home. Let's talk about it. When an all-powerful superintelligence chooses to study average Carol Peters, the fate of the world hangs in the balance. When the AI basically decides to either enslave, destroy, or save humanity, it's up to Carol to prove that people are worth saving. And believe me, this film does love that sentence. People are worth saving. Now, before I crack on with my review, I want to know your thoughts on Super Intelligence. I want to know if you loved it. If this is your favorite comedy of the year, I want to know that in the comments below because that's the most important part is for you to start the conversation. And also, if you're new here but you want to see more, please do click the subscribe button and share with your friends. Have them join the conversation. And also, my merch is now available on Redbubble and TeePublic. Let's get on with Super Intelligence. And what to say about this film? If you've ever seen a movie starring Melissa McCarthy that is directed by her husband Ben Falcone or Falcone, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, they have a batting average, let's say that. This film, unfortunately, is not very different. One of the things that this film does better than the average Melissa McCarthy directed by Ben Falcone film is that her character this time is not unlikable. There's nothing particularly likable about her. The film went so far into making her average that she doesn't stand out even for us as audience members. Watching this film and following this character there's nothing particularly special, rootable, or engaging about this character. There's not even anything that particularly compelling in the relationship she is chasing to get with Bobby Cannavale's character. Also, the two of them don't have that good chemistry. And the very idea of this film, and I'm sorry to get into that already, but there's barely anything to talk about in this film. The very idea of a super intelligence that is voiced by James Corden because this character really loves James Corden, just has nothing to it. The whole thing feels like a joke that is already stale by the time it starts. There's a quick gag that the superintelligence changes voices to communicate with certain people. Brian Tyree Henry, who is the best part of this film, like he's the one who got chuckles, out of me. And the super intelligence for him is voiced by Octavia Spencer, and it's actually Octavia Spencer. And that's the thing that got a little bit of a chuckle, but he's seriously the standout in this film. He's Carol's best friend. He's the guy that gets in with the government when they're trying to stop the super intelligence. But the biggest problem of this film, however, is that <laughs> is that the apocalypse is in the background. Quite literally. The, the apocalypse that is the big threat throughout this film is literally background noise. Now, I understand that the apocalypse is not the most relatable, compelling conflict you can have in a film. But look at every film, good or bad, that has the apocalypse in it. It never should be just in the background. That is your biggest threat. Every film has a B-plot and an A-plot. The B-plot should never be what is most important. Like, I know that Carol throughout this film wants to get in with her ex-boyfriend, and they get along great, and she's chasing this relationship, but the apocalypse, man. People are going to die. In fact, people die in this film, but you never feel that weight. You never feel the threat throughout the film of the apocalypse. And the way motivations change in characters, including the super intelligence, throughout this film is insane. Motivations and goals just change on a dime throughout this film for no particular reason. It's just to get the story going and get to the end of the film, which is almost two hours long, man. I urge for Hollywood to get to the point where one, maybe two out of every 20 comedies 
are over 90 minutes long. A comedy is fast. It's come and go. And if you're a pure comedy or if you're a genre-bending movie but comedy is your main genre, be really careful about being over 90 minutes long because rarely does it work. I wish I had more good things to say about super intelligence. I wish I could nuance a little bit on the scale of good and bad things, but it's just the same old Ben Falcone movie starring his wife that just doesn't go anywhere. You feel the importance of nothing, you feel the threat of nothing, you don't root particularly for anyone, and you don't latch on to any particular aspect of story or characters. I'm giving super intelligence a D. Now, what did you think of Super Intelligence, My Beautiful Geekies? Did you enjoy it? Do you enjoy the team-ups of Melissa McCarthy and Ben Falcone? Let me know in the comments below, because I hope you do. I, I just really, really don't, and I've grown tired of their team-ups. I don't think their creative marriage really is working and hasn't worked in a long, long time. So let me know all your thoughts in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching. You are the best. Stay tuned for many more reviews for Uncle Frank, Jungle Land, and many others throughout this week. I have my review up for The Mandalorian Chapter 13, The Jedi, and also my early review, non-spoilers, for Mank, which is coming out on Netflix December 4th. So I hope to see you on those as well. And again, if you're new here but you like this review, click the subscribe button and share with your friends. Have them join you in the geeky community. And so until the next video, stay beautiful, stay geeky, but most importantly, about everything else, forever and always, love each other and love the movies.